Hello, hello, my beauties and bees, and welcome to another episode of Cryptic Corner, where we explore the unexplained, the supernatural, the paranormal and hidden, the mysterious, the alien, the accursed, and the forbidden. And we're going back to our roots here on Cryptic Corner today and just jumping right into some cryptozoology. Yes, cryptozoology is the route that we're taking. So, I've been leaning into doing some other like aliens and Ouija boards and things like that. So, figured I needed to get back to my roots. And there's no better, no better way to do that in my opinion than by venturing, you know, down under and uh, fighting yourself a... Uh, Tanatula, Tananula Tiger. So that's what we're doing today. I don't know if you all are familiar with this creature or not. Sometimes it's a thylacine. A, like a Tasmanian wolf. Sometimes. Sometimes it's a, uh, Thylacoleo. The marsupial lion. And sometimes it's something else altogether. But we're going to explore this crazy creature uh, in depth and detail with uh, a channel that's called the uh, Tantanula Tiger. We're going to do this like a three-part series for starters. He's got a whole lot, a whole library of stuff on this. But uh, this was a sight. These are sightings in the uh, in the. 1890s so we'll start with part one here hold on let me get the let me get this set up here all right Let me know how the audio is, by the way. G'day. It's Jamie. And welcome to Tantanula Tigers. Today, I'm reading a couple of old newspaper reports about the Tantanula Tiger. So we'll get into it. This first article was published in Mount Gambier's Border Watch on Wednesday, the 9th of November, 1892. Reports are current of a tiger being at large at German Creek. An Aboriginal man reports having seen a large black and yellow striped beast that almost turned him white with fear. And several other residents say they have come across the footprints of an animal much larger than that of any cat tribe known to the... Well, yeah, he's an Aussie, so... Um, do we got any Aussie translators in the audience that can translate this for us? No, I just put the... I put the uh, transcript or whatever down here, the closed caption. The district. If such a distinguished visitor is really a German creek, the puzzle is to imagine where he could have come from. We have not heard of anyone who has lost a tiger, and it is not likely that one would be at large without some notice being taken of the occurrence. Is the story another edition of the far-famed Bunyip? The end. Okay, so this next article was also published in Mount Gambier's Border Watch on Wednesday, the 26th of April, 1893, titled Undesirable Visitors. A report as to a more alarming visitor comes from near Tantanula. It is said that the neighbourhood is in a state of terror. I like the... Uh, <laughs> it, gave, it gave us best to figure out what tan, uh, Tantanula was. It said, said Tanzanula. <laughs> Um, yeah. Through the presence of a tiger or leopard in the Mount Burr and Bluff country. A Mr. Taylor and his wife are reported to have seen it. They were driving along a road and stopped to allow it to cross in front of them. They describe it as being a little larger than a kangaroo dog, covered with spots or stripes and having a long tail dragging on the ground. What are said to be other evidences of the beast or prey are not... So, 
That could have been a thylacine, right? I mean, that, at this time, we're talking the 1890s. So thylacine would have still been around. There would have still been Tasmanian wolves. I think maybe they saw a Tasmanian wolf. I know that uh, the Tasmanian wolf, I guess Tasmanian wolves were extinct on the mainland way, way a long time before that. But, hmm. Hmm. I keep thinking like, oh, they're talking about it being in in, um, in Tasmania, but this, this Tanula is in Australia, so or in the mainland, um, in the, actually in the southeast. Most most uh, Tasmanian tiger sightings are from the uh, from New Queen, uh, yeah, Queensland, uh, not New South Wales. Wanting several residents have so, had some of their sheep killed and partly eaten. And we have been informed that a bullock belonging to a Mr. R. Long has been injured by having the flesh eaten off its back. In our issue, I have a... That might have been a parrot, because the Kia will do that. <laughs> That's a New Zealand, though. Uh, but a Kia, they're, they're, it's horrifying. They jump on, uh, jump on the back of a sheep, and they like rip the, the back open to get, to get fat deposits. It's horrifying. November 9th, we mentioned that tracks of the strange animal had been seen in the locality and that the residents were uneasy on account of certain disquieting rumours. There is talk of bringing the matter before the Banara District Council and asking them to take action. The end. Okay, so this next article was published in the Newcastle Morning Herald and Miners Advocate on Saturday the 6th of May, 1893. Title supposed to be a tiger. Considerable excitement prevails in the Tantanula district near Mount Gambia, owing to the depredations of an animal which is believed from its footprints to be a full grown tiger. The animal has killed a bullock. It is believed. So the last report didn't say it killed the bullock, just did it, did it nibble on its back? Did it kill a different one now? Um, and yeah, that's be scary for have a tiger on the loose. So they, 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 I think there is some speculation that oh maybe it's an escaped circus animal. It is the beast which lost which lo was lost when a cub 13 years ago from Saint Leon's Circus when travelling oh, between Mount go. Gambia and Millicent. There is plenty. Saint Leon Circus escaped tiger. Well, that sounds like that squares the way you'd think, but nope of scrubbing country to give him shelter and a hunting party to track the beast is being organized the governor will probably join the end okay so this next article was published in the south australian register on wednesday the 17th of may 1893 titled the tantanilla tiger an armed search party mount gambia march i love this guy's accent al it's so funny he sounds exactly like he sounds so Australian, like it's like so Australian, like like it's like he's almost like doing a character, but he's like really like this is legit. <laughs> Sixteen, a large party of armed men with an Aboriginal tracker, organised by Mr. John Livingston, will make a search for the alleged tiger to Moroni German Creek. Several gentlemen will go from here and will be joined at the locality by others. By others, they hope to put the question of the beast's existence or non-existence to rest. The end. Okay, so this next article was published in Sydney's Evening News on Wednesday, the 31st of May, 1893. Mr. C. McKenzie offers 50 pounds for the Tantanilla Tiger if taken alive and 25 pounds if dead. A wallaby hunter named Boardman yesterday came across a dead wallaby, freshly killed in a patch of stringy bark, half eaten. Beside it were footprints like those of an enormous cat, and he believes it was the tiger's word. The end. And the tiger would probably be all uh, totally taken off guard by a wallaby, though. Could you imagine the wallaby starts jumping like they do, and ti uh, actual tiger, like a tiger tiger? Yeah, today I learned Australia had its own beast of Javudan. Exactly, that's, that's that's what this is. It's like a 19th century. Uh, it's like a cross between the um, between the 
Ghosts in the Darkness, The Lions of Savo, and The Beast of Javudan. Um, this, this epic about hunting tigers in the outback. <laughs> Would have been a wild time to be in Australia, I tell you that. And, okay, so this next article was published in the Adelaide Observer on Saturday the 17th of June, 1893, titled The Tantanilla Tiger Again. A Mount Gambier resident in a letter to a friend in Adelaide says, The Tantanilla Tiger has again been seen, but since his last appearance, it has, must have grown very quickly. As when seen the other day, it was as large as a horse and had changed colour to a dusky brown. Not if it got the drop on the wallaby. Well, I mean, it would have been like, but I'm just thinking like, uh, cause a, a kangaroo, a wallaby, maybe not so much, but like a, like a kangaroo, it might decide it wants to fight that tiger. <laughs> Kangaroos are, uh, are gym bros about wanting to fight. They kill, uh, dogs, even big dogs, a kangaroo can, I'm not saying they could take a tiger, but. Just imagine a tiger coming up on a big red kangaroo or a big gray kangaroo. Um, and the kangaroo spins around and does its puffed up thing. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the kookaburra in the background. Yeah. It's, at least it's actually accurate here. Usually they put that sound in like the jungle. Uh... Kangaroo used to be, uh, kangaroo boxing used to be like a real sport. Like guys would get in the ring with them. And the kangaroos would, uh, would fight the people. Evidently to suit the dull times and the dull weather, which we are now prevailing. The end. Okay, so this next article was published in Mount Gambia's Border Watch on Wednesday, the 26th of July, 1893. This Tantanilla tiger, or whatever it is, that kills the mutilate <laughs> stuck in the gym. Ellen, <laughs> there's change in Illinois or whatever it is. <laughs> Why did it get Illinois from that? That's crazy. Right, listen. This Tantanilla tiger, or whatever it is, that kills the mutilate stuck in the gem and creek in Tantanilla <laughs> district, is not dead, nor has the prospective fear of another and much more thorough hunt for it persuaded it to emigrate. For traces of it are still found near German Creek and adjacent neighborhood. So I'm just now I'm I can't, I'm just totally distracted by the uh <laughs> by the uh narrator breaking this uh breaking this down uh and the uh the AI trying to keep it narrated. <laughs> uh or, yeah, keep it written. Let's see. Probably a koala in its Halloween costume. Yeah, with stripes, maybe. Recently, the carcasses of several sheep have been found mutilated near Kula in a manner unusual for a wild dog. And the residents there are convinced that whether the other... What's a manner unusual for a wild dog, though? Wild dogs are pretty opportunistic, though. Um, the, the best way to decide, um, it's a large predator of any type is the, it, the you know, we bust open the corpse at the, uh, belly. Um, it's the kill method that's different with dogs from felines. Now, a tiger is going to, <clears throat> sorry, Godzilla, just to use you as an example, um, a tiger gets its jaws around the mouth of its prey like this. Big cats are, are, they suffocate. They suffocate their prey. So that's what they do. They bam like this, hold on to the neck with their claws, right? Until it suffocates. That's how you tell a big cat, uh, it's a big cat kill. Now, a canid, well, some of them might hang onto the face, right? They definitely hang on to the face uh, if they can get a chance to, while others tend to start nipping at the hindquarter. They're going for, they're going for a, uh, there's a nerve under the tail and tetrapods, right? If they break the, between the, the anus and the, and the tailbone, if they hit that, if they can, if they can slice that nerve, the animal will bleed out. So that's why that's a way you can tell the difference between a big cat attack and a canine attack. Generally, there won't be 
um, a lot of uh, tearing at the underside, um, and there will be le actually less face damage when it comes to a big cap. Now, um, obviously there's other predators as well, but like a crocodilian or something, you'd be really clear that the dad they had torn it up because they would do a death roll and s scatter it to pieces. Now, when it comes to the Tananula tiger, let's find out what they, how they describe because so far, thank you Godzilla for your participation because so far we uh, we've heard of them jumping on the back of a, of a cow, not killing it, but you know, of but but eating eating back fat, which is a it's a very marsupial thing to do, I guess is the way to describe it. Not to say a cat won't jump on the the back; they definitely will, especially on a large prey item like a, like cattle. A tiger can jump on the back and kind of grab it and crawl up the back, get to the throat, and do their do their thing. They can do a throat bite too. I guess I should clarify on that they'll also do a throat bite which does basically the same thing it's either here or here it doesn't matter um it doesn't matter um particularly uh which both options are viable uh, i believe the the muzzle bite is is more favored by pan panthers um but a neck bite is is definitely viable and something that's well documented in, in tigers and in um in all big cats so they do they do attack do a neck bite as well uh, wow walla bonga longi those those are some australian names if big cats had thumbs they'd strangle you with with piano wire yeah cats just love to kill they have that killer instinct if you hear hoof beats you think horses not unicorns agreed if i smell horse shit and hear no hoof beats think pegasus <laughs> you guys uh animal that does the mischief be a tiger or not it is not a dog they hold, and we may presume they are better able to judge as to that than any individual who may sit and sneer in his office. The same strange animal is at large in the rough country here. Probably as soon as the weather and nature of the country permits, another hunt will be organised. The end. Okay, so this next article was published in Victoria's Hamilton Spectator on Saturday the 4th of August, 1894. Titled, The Tantanula Tiger. Our man Gambia correspondent writes, the alleged reappearance of the famous Tantanula Otaga has been the subject of a good deal of discussion. Tangelo Otaga, Otaga. The Tangelo Otaga, that sounds like a cool species too. This is my new copy. It's from a place called Crazy Cakes and it, they do uh, cakes, but they also do coffee. And this one is tiramisu and it's so good. during the past few days. A party of mounted police and station hands went out on Friday for the purpose of bringing in the skin of the brute. But although they scoured the locality in which he is supposed to have made his latest appearance for the greater part of three days, they failed to find the slightest trace of his presence. Mr. Uphill, who brought the news of the last appearance of the tiger, is, so far as I know, a thoroughly reliable young man. But his account of his recent adventure is singularly deficient in important details and suggests that suffering from a severe scare, he allowed his imagination to run right and magnified what may, after all, prove only to be a large dog in the ferocious denzian of the Bengalese forest. He says that the creature was... Bengalese forest? Bengalese forest. Hmm. I don't know if I know that. Is it talking about the Sindaman? 
I thought maybe it was a place in Australia called the Bengalese Fort. Bengalese Fort. He was chasing after Mother Cattle. And when he was within 100 yards of it... it you definitely would see a, a tiger in the, in the Bengalese forest. The Bengalese forest. The literal, the real, the original, but... <laughs> Uh, cause that's, but your know, Bengal tigers come from the Sindaban. Uh, it laid down, putting its head on its forepaws and remained in that position for a short time, afterwards cantering back into the scrub. Strange enough, although so close to it, he failed to notice whether or not it was striped, and all that he could say about it was that it was of a dark tan colour, something like a lioness. Nevertheless, as he had seen the tigers in the zoo, he had no hesitation in declaring this to be a genuine Bengal tiger. Everyone who is supposed to have seen the tiger has given a totally a different account of its color. Yeah, so we're going to see that to be the trend here. You know, the, 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 it's, it's like the beast de Jevoudan, uh, absolutely, especially in the variety of ways that it's described, the different colors and sizes and stripes and, stri and spots and... Oh and general appearance and it may therefore be supposed that a whole menagerie of wild beasts has broken loose somewhere in the district and the wonder is that any boundary riders and bushmen have been left alive to give further descriptions of the various animals the end okay so this article was published in sydney's the daily telegraph on wednesday 8th of august 1894 titled notes of the day a Mount Gambier youth has galloped far with erect hair and distended eyes to tell of the tiger again. He suddenly came across the monster, which, of course, had a full-grown sheep in its mouth at the time. In all these, one man observations of the varying beasts and strange animals of the destructive tiger. So now it's gotten big enough to, to have a sheep in its mouth. When we originally remember, it couldn't. It couldn't take down a. Uh, it couldn't take down cattle. But now it's got a sheep in its mouth. Genghis Khan DNA. Right. They are seen at their worst. The end. Okay, so this next article was published in Adelaide's The Express and Telegraph on Thursday, the 22nd of August, 1895. Titled, The Tantanilla Tiger. So this thing's been at large for um, since 1892. So we've covered three years so far in this first video. Yeah. At last, the Tantanilla mystery has been solved. For many months, the residents of the southeast have been much ex exercised in spirit over the vagaries of some member of the genus Carnivora, which has generally been accepted as a tiger. The tiger has become famous. All of Australia has heard of the animal, and no doubt the entire civilised world will be interested in learning its ultimate fate. It has, in fact, been the cause of much jealousy. Their Victoria neighbours were not long behind the Mount Gambier people in laying claim to a share of the beast's attention. And at one time, hopes were entertained in the Corn district that the distinction had been conferred on that locality by its presence. Many sceptics have declared... Yeah, they're both, both trying to, to move in on getting some of them tourist dollars for their... Their beast. They believe that there there was no such bosom, and some have been ungenerous as to ascribe the appearance of the strange striped quadruped entirely to the influence of locally made spirits. However, all these doubts have been set to rest. South East Eastern residents have now the satisfaction of knowing that they have not cried wolf too often, and that the imputations against their veracity and sobriety were quite uncalled for. It was no mythical creature which has been preying on the herds and scaring the inhabitants, but also it was not a tiger. The invader has been shot, and its mortal remains have been brought into Mount Gambia, and it now- All right, they shot it. Look at that beautiful specimen there. 19th century uh, taxidermy always makes me laugh. There was a learning curve. <laughs> now appears that it was a wolf. The animal, which was shot on Mr. Gardner's outstation yesterday morning, is fawn coloured, with a dark back and is described as exceptionally large. It measures four feet six inches from the head to the tip of the tail. 
The skin is to be stuffed, and no doubt the ultimate fate of this interesting member of the Volpine tribe will be that it will be exhibited for the benefit of a mob. Now, Volpine is the fox tribe, if you want to get into technicalities. Uh, it'd be the, the canine tribe, not the Volpine tribe. Now, um... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let him finish here on this video, but there, I have some thoughts. ...in crowds as the Tantanula Tiger. Its extinction will cause relief to the local sheep owners, but to the southeastern journalists, the loss will almost be irre irreparable. The tiger has instigated nearly as many interesting and imaginative paragraphs as the once popular bunyip, and the enterprising... So... You get, get a good look at this because I don't think this is a wolf. Um, and I'll go into that in a minute. President of Mount Gambia and the vicinity will now have to seek some fresh source of inspiration. The end. Okay, so this is the final article. This was published in Western Australia's Cool Gardening Mining Review on Saturday the 4th of January 1896. Title, Things in General. The Tantanula tiger, which was shot some time ago near Adelaide and turned out at the inquest to be a dingo, has again been seen by a man who knows it is a tiger, and he has a picture of one in his house. The Tantanula tiger, the bunyip and the wild white man will probably go down to the next generation together. The end. Oh, this is really interesting, this. Um, I love this story, the Tantanula tiger. It's probably Australia's most famous uh, big cat thylacine, thylacolio, or whatever you want to call it reports at last so there are some other phantom big cats from australia that are more uh cat-like than this one actually there's the blue mountain panther uh the gippsland phantom cat the grampians uh puma which is maybe the same phenomena uh it's in the same area uh the sunshine coast big cat and then the tantanula tiger so there are a few but Lasted over six years, at least, um, and they end up. A lot of people seeing this creature. And some said it had stripes. Some said it was spots. Some said it was fawn. Some said it was huge. Some said it was small. No one's got like the same um, sighting of this creature, whatever it was. At one point, they shot a large pig that was uh, eating uh, carcasses that they thought it was it, and then eventually um, a bloke shot what he thought was the Tantanula tiger, and it turned out to be an Assyrian wolf, like from Russia, which is really- Okay, so Assyria is not Russia, and Assyrian wolves don't exist. There's no such thing as an Assyrian wolf. Um, that's where you see what you'll see. Uh, if you actually, if you, if you I, I give you all of the, the, a couple minutes to Google Assyrian wolf, and the only thing that you will pull up is Tantanula tiger because the Syrian wolves are not a subspecies. That it would be uh, an Indian wolf or European wolf, um, depending on what area of the uh, Assyrian region that you were that you were in. Um, but there are wolves around the Caspian Sea, uh, you know, traditionally. But they they're, they're not a special subspecies called the Syrian wolves. Um, what I believe, looking at the specimen. Here, let me go back to what he says. But the really weird thing is, after they shot it, and they had it stuffed, and, and it's in the it's in the um, Tantanilla Hotel now on display, people who saw the stuffed creature all said this was not the creature that they saw, which is really interesting because, like, what is it? And then, like, so we've got tight. And see, they in ring like you were saying, Beast de Jevoudan. That's that's it right there. Um, the they killed something and mounted it, and the people who saw it said, "Nope, that's not it." Um, I it, I think it was a. It looks like it was a uh, maybe a, a dingo uh, crossed with a, a large dog breed. I guess. <sighs> Thylacine, thylacolares, and wolves running around South Australia. It's really weird. And um, virtually every tiger or thylacoleo sighting afterwards, they're all known as Tantanula tigers. Whenever someone saw something, they called it a Tantanula tiger. Okay, yeah. that's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye. All right, so that was the first video. Before I move too far into that, we're going to look at... Um, 
this little article here from 2019, and then we'll watch the second video. Uh, the Grizzly Mystery of the uh, Murderous Tananula Tiger. Locals thought a wild beast was skinning their livestock alive, but it turns out the truth was much more terrifying. In November 1891, uh, in the rough country, about 30 kilometers northwest of Mount G Gambier in South Australia, a mysterious animal was on the prowl. Aboriginal shearers working on grazier John Cameron's property, German Creek, came running to him one night, scared by a strange animal that didn't, didn't belong in Australia. This beast, they said, had so frightened their dogs that the mutts were cowering in the hut. The graziers took no notice until the next night when it happened again. This time, John Cameron found tracks, and while they looked like that of a dog, were were far larger, you know, far larger, measuring around ten centimeters across. Nine months later, also at German Creek, sheep station manager John Livingston was told by an Aborigine of a strange animal stalking the property. Then, in December of 1892. At the nearby town of Tananula, Walter Taylor and his wife were driving home. This is the case that he just told us about in their horse and buggy. And they saw the strange animal slinking across the road. Well, I'm not going to recap all the stories he just told. You know, so you see the same uh, information there. I'm just trying to get to the part about... Here we go. After many unsuccessful attempts to shoot and poison the beast... He finally got it by mixing a paste of flour, sugar, and phosphorus and pouring it over a dead sheep. Uh, the boar, he said, which was 2.7 meters long from snout to tail, had a uh, sharp 9-inch tusk. He sent these tusks of the boar to the Express and Telegraph newspaper along with a letter describing how he'd killed the monster. Now, that was the boar that they killed, right? They killed a pig. <laughs> I feel quite satisfied, he wrote, in that killing this pig, I have killed the tiger that was doing so much damage to my sheep and weak cattle in the district of Tantanula. The newspaper reckoned he was right. It appears as though... Mr. Matheson has achieved the killing of the Tananula tiger, one of the writers concluded, except that he hadn't. Something continued killing sheep and leaving big paw prints. Because a pig doesn't leave paw prints. That should have been one of the first clues that, hey, we're looking for something that's leaving paw prints. Probably a pig. That's not, that's not how tracking works. Um, in August 1894, Livingston's 17-year-old nephew, Donald Smith, was riding in German Creek property near Lake Bonnie when he noticed a flock of sheep in distress. Investigating, he saw at a distance of a few yards a large, strange animal walking firmly towards the Thai trees with a full-grown sheep struggling in its mouth. Okay, that's the yeah, way we heard about that one. To its uncle's. The inspector in charge believes the claim dispatched two mile constable and his black tracker to search for the tiger. In 1850 or 1895, there was sightings in the Tintinula tiger every month or so. Wow, so it got really, really busy. And it started changing colors. Whatever the beast uh, was singling, whatever it was, the beast was singling out sheep and attacking them. The men crept closer until they were 90 meters away as they watched the beast knock a sheep over and sat over on its haunches. Seizing the opportunity, Donovan raised his Winchester rifle, took steady aim, and fired. The beast was hit, but rather than drop, it bolted, running away as fast as it could go with Donovan and Watson chasing after it. After more than 180 meters, the creature tumbled, fell to the earth, and didn't get up. Approaching cautiously, Donovan and Taylor found the animal dying. 
The bullet had entered through its right shoulder blade, piercing the heart and exiting through the ribs on the left side. Uh, what they saw dead in front of them wasn't a tiger. It looked like a male dog, but no breed of dog they'd ever seen before. So once they find out it's a dog, they got to try to make it fancy. Just before 2 p.m., Donovan arrived. Um, ba -ba -ba. Everyone speculated it was too big to be a dingo. Maybe a dingo crossbred with a large dog. That's, that's, that's Miss Bumblebee's take. Mr. Mark and several others who had been to Germany and other parts of Europe declared it was neither. They agreed it was a European wolf. Another gent suggested a Syrian wolf, but there's no such thing as a Syrian wolf. European wolf would be all right, but it doesn't look like a European wolf. Its hair is too short. It looks like a dingo. It has dingo hair. It's part dingo. Whatever it is, it's definitely part dingo. Just my humble opinion. Uh oh. By Thursday night, uh, Thomas Donovan had received eight or nine telegrams from uh, asking. Soon to take it down. Soon. Is there anybody going to. Okay. In those first few days after he'd shot the wolf, some who'd been the mo most vocal believers in a beast roaming the countryside now didn't believe that this was the creature. John Livingston was, wasn't satisfied. It was the same animal described by so many witnesses. Mr. Unger, a witness who followed the creature, was absolutely sure it wasn't the same animal. So, too, was, mis was Mr. Unger. Houston, who, uh, who'd seen it just a few weeks ago in Duck Hole Paddock. Uh, however, Mr. McClay, who'd also spotted it in the area, reckoned it was the same beast, as did young Donald Smith. So, sounds like maybe there was two beasts. The border watch uh, sided with the doubters. However frightened one might be at it, it seems conceivable that the idea of the tiger should come to mind, their correspondent wrote. That said, the paper couldn't see how it couldn't be the creature. It is highly improbable that two such animals as a wolf and a tiger should be roaming in the same locality in that in this district. Yeah, because this one's a, this is this is a dingo, a big dingo. <laughs> Probably with uh, domestic dog stock in it. Unless, of course, what some witness had actually... It was actually a thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger, believed extinct on the mainland. At that time, it was. Many, uh, most descriptions more closely matched the marsupial wolf. That's what I'm thinking, too. Uh, back then, though, conservation centered on how the wolf had wound up in South Australian countryside. One theory was that it had survived a shipwreck on the rugged coastline. Another offered that it was offered by the Adelaide Zoo director was that it was a crossbred wolf that had escaped from a Victorian zoo where s several such specimens had once been capped. Okay. Next few years, the Tatanula tiger would be seen repeatedly in the district, so it kept being sighted. So let's move on to video two. All right, there's part one down. Video, they're, they're not consistent in their length. This one's only four minutes, so let's go for it. Good day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Tatanula Tigers. Today, I'm reading a few newspaper articles on the Tantanula Tiger again. This is part two, so we'll get into them. This first newspaper article was published in the Millicent Times on Saturday, the 10th of July, 1897, titled The Tiger Once Again. The Tantanula Tiger, after a long vacation, has returned to business, this time in the neighbourhood of Port Macdonald. A Mr. Robert Carrison of the locality last week 
reported the presence of a large, strange animal which had been prowling and roaring in the vicinity of Port MacDonald in a very determined fashion. A tiger roar is kind of hard to mistake, you know, but... The beast was seen by Mrs. Walter Carrison and according to specifications, was as large as a Newfoundland dog, was striped and had a tail like a cat. Later news was to the effect that the tiger had been roaming the neighbourhood of Tantanula on the lookout for old friends. But as most of the tiger enthusiasts of the district have left, his reception will not be very warm. And on this subject, the tiger, it is curious that the faculty of sighting of these queer phenomena appears to run in families. One of the, the strongest former supporters of the Tantanula animal was a trooper who saw the bunyip at Robe years ago, while among later the tigers... The bunyip of what? Because, yeah, so there's always a way to scale this stuff out. The more extra-natural phenomena that people experience, the less likely I am to believe that their experiences exist outside of their own mind, right? Once you start seeing multiple different cryptids, and once you're encountering Bigfoot and... You're encountering uh, Mothman, and you're uh, you're also you know communing with spirits on your Ouija board. You you become less and less credible the more and more claims you stack onto it. Less credible that it's happening outside your own brain. Not that I'm not that I'm accusing you of lying, but at that point it's like how many of these things can happen to one person? Sears is a family which had you know. possession of a full flavored ghost at Port McDonald about 17 years back. The end. Okay, so this final article was published in South Australia's The Millicent Times on Saturday the 11th of May 1901, titled The Tiger. The Tantanula Tiger, like the mythical bunyip, is a ver- Why does this, ti does this tiger look like a dog in some pictures? I think it is a dog. It's, uh, it's a, uh, as far as I can tell, the animal that was shot was uh, a dingo dog hybrid, looks like. They called it a wolf, but it doesn't look like a wolf to me. It doesn't have the the fur texture and coloration for of a wolf as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, Bethesda game design. <laughs> Just talking about... Uh, Bethesda. First to passing out of existence or imagination, says the South East Star of May 7th. An animal believed to be the tiger was shot some years ago, but residents in the Millicent district are disconcerted at the report that it was seen last week at Mount Hope by a local resident, Mr. S. Haynes, who saw it in uncertain light of evening. The following day, Ms. An uncertain light, yeah, that can be, that's a running theme for these types of sightings. Mrs. Brown and Wright, who live in that locality, also saw the animal at a distance of about 60 yards. But they did not make a close investigation and the tiger made for the rangers. Later, an armed party made a search and traced footprints to the mouth of the cave, near the entrance of which was found the carcass of a sheep. Residents are reported to be still on the lookout for the animal. There has been some talk of a party to capture this tiger and present, present him to the Duke of York with the condition that the Duke should visit Millicent. Also, one or two poli- Trying to get the Duke of York to visit Millicent by telling him there's a tiger there? More tourism bucks. Politicians have an eye on the animal with a view to capture it as an advertisement for Parliament. Men have got into Parliament for much less. Taking it all around, the tiger has struck a dangerous time of year to come into the scene. The end. Well, that's real interesting. This, so, this, in part one that I did of the Tantanilla tiger, the first report it was in 1892, and this last one is in 1901. So that's nine years that people mm -hmm. have been seeing the Tantanilla tiger, and whether like there was a wolf that was shot that they thought was a Tantanilla tiger. So whether it's a, a, was a wolf. Yeah, I mean, once you have an established phenomena, right, people are going to start to associate or draw connections between, oh, I heard something in the bush, must have been a, the Tantanula tiger. Oh, I kind of, something killed my sheep, must have been the Tantanula tiger. Yeah. Wolf, 
or an actual Bengal tiger type creature or a thylacine or a thylacoleo, who knows? But it's been getting around for nearly 10 years in the South Australia area, which is really, really interesting. Okay, that's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye-bye. All right. And then we got one more to go. All right. Tell us what you got, Jamie. G'day. It's Jamie, and welcome to Tantanula Tigers. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper report about a man who actually saw the Tantanula Tiger, and this is his eyewitness account. So we'll get into it. This was published in Adelaide's... The Shiba Inu? That's what you all think it looks like? They needed the Duke to face the hazards? <laughs> yeah. Staff. That's funny. Candle yellow tiger. Looks like the meme dog, yeah. Chronicle on Thursday, the 26th of May, 1932. Titled, Man Who Saw the Tiger. New light on 37 years old mystery. Former Tudor's convincing story by Veritas. Did the tiger, Tantanilla tiger ever exist outside the imagination of nerve shock settlers? Here is the story of a man who saw it, honest, outright and convincing. He occupies a high and honourable position and his veracity is above reproach. In so first of all, nobody's veracity is above reproach. Anybody can lie under the right circumstances. That's just the truth. We're humans. Mm. 1899. I was acting as a tutor on a station near the shores of Lake Eliza, between Rabe and Panola. The ranges in that part are wild in the extreme, ideal for bush ranging. The country is of limestone formation, with numerous surface caves and subterranean caverns, many of the latter of vast extent. There are some places where the sound of a horse's hoofs and the rumble of a buggy wheel revibrate beneath one like distant thunder till they die away in the hollow distances beneath. There is an authentic story of a fox terrier dog entering a surface cave and losing its way, remaining underground for several days and finally emerging at the surface over a mile away in a weak and famished condition. While thus lost, its feeble barking could be heard at intervals from many points wide apart. Showing the extent and... That's so sad. There was a dog stuck down there barking for help and people could hear it, but they couldn't get it out. And at least they got out, though. ...ramifications of these underground passages. Creatures of the night. My two pupils, being delicate, lessons were restricted to a couple of hours in the morning. The afternoons and evenings were my own to do as I liked with. Being myself young and an enthusiastic shot, I roamed the country daily with gun or rifle and explored the surrounding lakes. With a cannon? Wait, what? What are you running around with a cannon for? That's in 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 yeah, incredibly dangerous. Early. On more than one occasion, I amused myself by watching the entrance to a natural cave or tunnel, which ran into the hillside, securely hidden behind a rock keeping absolute silence as the sun sank and the shades of night crept on. One would see rabbits, wombats, porcupines and foxes emerge at intervals from the same exit. There's and porcupines down there? Why? Uh, wow. When did they get porcupines in Australia? Foxes and rabbits I know were invasive. I didn't know invasive porcupines were a thing. Let's see. Australian porcupine. Maybe they mean the, the echidna. But they mean an echidna. That would make more sense. You think they mean echidna? But, mm -hmm. okay and go off about their various business. 
one more proof of the many diverging branches of these curious and fascinating limestone formations. I had been in the district about six or eight months when the discerning rumours began to circulate, at first vague and at long intervals, later oftener and with more detail, to the effect that some large animal was abroad and had been seen by various people, chiefly belated travellers returning from country shows, sales and such like gathering points. Reign of Terror. The first people who were reputed to have seen the creature gave very scanty descriptions of its appearance, and even these did not always agree. Yeah, they're very, length, very inconsistent. Grey, yellow, candle yellow, whatever that means. As more appearances were reported, these vague and conflicting descriptions crystallised through various stages to a wolf, a bear, and lastly a tiger. The hardy dweller in the Australian bush is not unusually afflicted with nerves, and the rumoured tiger did not at first cause any real apprehension. It was naturally the subject of many an argument around the fireside or on the track, but was invariably dismissed in the end as being either a hoax or else a hallucination caused by drink. The tiger seen through the whiskey bottle. What the hell were they drinking in Australia in the 1890s? It makes you hallucinate. Came in time a standing joke. Suddenly, however, to our bewilderment, our sober, unimaginative neighbours, who lived a few miles away, declared that they too had seen the tiger. Their perturbation was too obviously genuine to allow of doubt. Indeed, so thoroughly scared were they, they left the job of fencing they were engaged in near the spot where they had seen the animal, and nothing would induce them to go near the place for some time. Then commenced a reign of terror in the neighbourhood. Children were forbidden to wander out of sight of their you homes. You say reign of terror, uh, is it killing livestock? Is that what we're talking about? No one ventured out after dark. On first talk, taking up my duties at the station, I was allotted to my employers. A co it's the, staff, if you want to move here with the tigers prowling around, be my guest. They will get you. Comfortable room in their house. Later, however, owing to the habit I had then indulged in of smoking in bed and keeping late hours... You think they're drinking Fosters there, Robert? In the 1890s? Maybe. I don't know when that brewery opened. Down under. Bathtub Wallaby Whiskey. Ooh, that'll do it. I was offered and accepted quarters in an old wooden building called by the family the Whirly. The shed was the original home of the settlers before their present commodious stone house was built and stood at the entrance to a gully leading back into the ranges, about a quarter of a mile from the new house. The whirly was divided into two rooms by a thin matchboard partition about six feet high. And the part I slept in was sealed with bags sewn together. The small door and window gave light and ingress to this part. The other part was empty, save for some old small bags in the corner and a few old gardening tools. It had rickety double doors, which did not fit closely to the ground. In fact, at one place where the earth floor was worn away, there was a space of about 18 inches or rather more under the door. Once installed... Is this, the, is the, is this has turned into a uh, Airbnb review. <laughs> All in these quarters, it mattered not to anyone what hours I returned from duck shooting, and I was free to smoke all night if I so desired. Keep your dog at home. Belonging to the owner of the station was a handsome collie dog named Mac. Mac was a great favourite with everyone, and was so gentle and intelligent that he was given the run of the place, never being chained up at night as the other dogs were. He had a great aversion to be out in the rain, and many a night when it came on wet, Mac would creep into the vacant half of the whirly and throw himself down on the potato sacks in the corner. The rattling of the rickety double doors as the old dog squeezed under would wake me. At a word from me, he would thump the floor with his tail and settle down to sleep. 
About this time, okay. a German. So he's explaining why the how the dog acts when it comes in there, because I imagine the beast is going to come in there next. Neighbor of ours had some of his sheep destroyed by dogs, and made a considerable noise about it. One morning, Mac appeared with a note attached to his collar. Keep your dog at home or he'll be shot. We were all much astonished that Mac should have thus gone away at night, but inasmuch as the gentlest and most behaved dogs have been known to kill sheep when in bad company by night, we took the hint. Henceforth, our pet was securely chained up in a sheltered corner behind the car pens. His owner personally saw to this the last thing at nine. One evening at bedtime, as it was dark and rainy, and the ground around the cow yards was very slushy, I offered to chain up Mac on my way to bed in the whirly, and thus save the owner the bother of putting on his heavy boots and overcoat. This job duly accomplished, I went to bed to and to sleep. Seize the tiger. An hour or two later, I was wakened by the violent rattling of the double doors leading into the farther position of the shed. The rain had ceased and the night was still very clear. That's not your dog. This is like the, the, the dog that licks your palm under the bed kind of story. My first waking thought was that Mac was forcing his way in, as was his custom on wet nights. Next, I was struck by the rattling being so much louder and more prolonged than usual, as if the animal had been too large to get in the opening easily. Nor did he, when, when once in the shed, go straight to his corner on the bags, but paced stealthily around and around the room. On full consciousness, consciousness returning, I remembered having chained up the dog on my way to bed. Still, I suspected nothing, but concluded that he had slipped his head out of the collar and got loose. The recollection of the threatening letter received a few days previously flashed into my mind, and being warmly attached to the dog, I jumped out of bed and going outside, opened the doors leading into the part of the shed he was in and called him, intending to chain him up again more securely. Uh -oh. To my amazement, instead of the collie coming to me with a wagging tail, a great, long, low-hung beast flashed past me, almost brushing against my legs, banded up the gully in the starlight and disappeared in the darkness of the range. Utterly astonished at the incomprehensible behaviour of, doom, doom, doom. of what I thought to, thought to be my favourite, I went to the calf pens where I found Mac asleep and on his chain. Returning in the days to the, in my bed in the whirly, I, for the first time, became conscious of a strong, unpleasant odour. It was not until after wrecking my brains for some time that I finally recalled where I had smelled that- It's Aussie, Dr. Mordecai, Aussie English. You gotta think, think uh, crocodile hunter. Peculiar smell before the cages of the carnivora at the zoo. For the remainder of my stay in these parts, a matter of several months- Carnivoras are, or carnivorans are especially famously musky. I slept with a loaded rifle by my bedside, but nothing more did I see, see or hear of my nocturnal visitor. A year or so after leaving the southeast, I read in the press that a huge beast supposed by some to have been a wolf and by others to have been a cross between a wolf and a large dog, had been shot. Whether or not this was the strange creature that paid me a visit, I cannot say. Although, to the best of my belief, and bear in mind I only had a fleeting glimpse of it, the animal I saw had much more the shape and gait of a leopard than a dog or a wolf. No more appearances of the tiger being reported, gradually interest died away. And when later a sheep stealer's lair was discovered and many people inclined to the belief that the tiger story was purposely set afoot by thieves as a blind to hide their villainous dealings, still, when anyone... Like a Scooby-Doo style mystery. They, uh, they pretended to be the Tintinula tiger, uh, tiger so that they could steal sheep. In the, uh, in the, the wild settlement. One scoffs too loudly, the picture comes back to me of myself standing at the open door of the whirly, 
staring at a great long sinuous form, disappearing with panther-like bounds into the wild and rugged ranges beyond one starlight night long ago. The end. Wow, that is super interesting, this. So this guy uh, had a real close encounter with the Tannerlilla tiger, and he said that, like, the wolf that was shot, it didn't seem to look like that. It doesn't look like a wolf to me. Does that look like a wolf to you guys? That does not look like a wolf. It looks, to me, it looks like it's at least part dingo. Maybe, maybe a di part dingo, part wolf. I imagine they can breed. You're glad Max survived? Yeah, having a break into the... Uh, Room, the room next door. What he got a glimpse of, but he said it was more the shape and the gait of a leopard, and uh, it had a great long sinuous form, and it disappeared with panther-like bounds into the wild. So I'd love to know whether he saw like a big cat of some descript, or a thylacine or a thylacolea, but uh, really interesting stuff. Okay, that's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye. All right, so that this has been the Tantanula Tiger. This channel doesn't have very many subscribers. I'm definitely going to subscribe because I enjoyed responding to him. He seems like a like a mellow dude, so um, did enjoy engaging with this content. He does have other stories too, like a, that are actually about escaped lions tigers and stuff like that on here um it's mostly about the tananula tiger though um the tasmanian devil the gippsland tiger chugum pumba yeah so we'll come back and revisit this channel again i'm sure i really did enjoy this one um what do you think do you think what do you think the tananula tiger was do you think it was like uh uh escaped big cat on the loose uh, somebody uh, discreetly took care of or eventually died off I think it was this hybrid animal um, that was shot in the area the dingo dog that's on display um, or is it a, a Tasmanian wolf or a Tasmanian tiger uh, by Uh let me know in the comments down below I'm really interested to know what you guys think. Uh, appreciate you all for sticking with me through this morning's episode of Cryptic Corner. And uh, please remember to be kind, take care, and we will see you next time.